Today is the celebration of Corpus Christi. It's the day we celebrate the Eucharist, the actual, the body and blood of Jesus Christ that is present to us on the altar in the Eucharist. Jesus appears to us under the auspices of bread and wine, but at the substantial level, at the substance level, more profound than just the material level, at the substance level, the bread and the wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is transubstantiation that happens at a more profound level than just the material level, but at the level of substance, it becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Well, now, in order to understand that further, we have to understand what that means for us. And let's be straightforward. What the Eucharist is, is the manifestation of the Father in the Son to us. Now, you may say, but this is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Where does the Father play, its, pl play himself out in this? The answer is simple. Jesus did everything the Father asked him to do. He was obedient to the Father. Therefore, the reason why we have the Eucharist today is because it was the will of the Father. So what we see is the manifestation of the Father in the Son. That is what we have in the Eucharist. And this is the manifestation of God to us. Well, now the question is, how do we respond to that? And the best example we can find is when we look in the Old Testament, we look at where God has manifested himself to others. And my preferred example of this is with Moses. Moses is exiled from the Egyptians. He's now up in the mountains. And he encounters this bush that is burning, but it's not being consumed. And Moses hears God call him over. But at that point, God gives him a command. Remove your shoes, you are on holy ground. God has manifest, manifested himself to Moses and calls Moses over, but also teaches Moses that we approach God on his terms, not on ours. And so when we receive the Eucharist, we receive the Eucharist on God's terms, not on ours. And that's the reason why the church gives us certain rules that we're called to follow before we receive the Eucharist. Only the church's rules. Other people come up with all these rules and you go, well, where did you get this? Um, no, we follow what the church says in the church's rules about how we receive the Eucharist. Why? Because the church has been called by God to communicate his message to the world, and therefore God is communicated, communicating how we are to approach him, and we always approach him on his terms, not ours. And so when we have the manifestation of God in our presence, which is the Eucharist, we approach the Eucharist on God's terms, not on ours. I've met people who do it differently. People will say, I don't need to follow the rules of the church. I don't need to go and receive the Eucharist the way the church says. The church may say, I should not receive the Eucharist, but I don't need to listen to the church. And it's I, I, I. And you hear these people, and at times you can absolutely feel and sense the obstinance, the hardness of their hearts. They can never come to know Christ because they are approaching Christ as the Pharisees approach Christ. Remember, the Pharisees said, we will believe in you on our terms, not on yours. And they would only accept Christ on their own terms. That's why it's so important that we realize that we can only approach Christ on God's terms, not on ours. If we approach him on our terms, we will never find him. Um, another example I have is recently I was speaking to someone, they said they wanted to see an exorcist. And I said, well, you know, the best form of exorcism is the sacrament of reconciliation. Well, the person responded, I don't go to confession. I confess to God directly. And I said to that, that person, that's half your problem right there. Why? Because we approach God on our terms, not on, on, on his terms, not on ours. And if he says, come to me for confession through my church, and you say, no, I'm going to do it my way, you're approaching God on your terms, not on his, and you will never find him, just as the Pharisees never found God. Well, now the next question is why? What's so important about receiving the Eucharist? And here is where it becomes very important. When Moses experienced the manifestation of God, he was called by God to be the liberator of the Jewish people from the Egyptians. 
When you are called by God, you too are given a role. Your role is to share in the ministry of Jesus as priest, prophet, and king. Jesus is priest, prophet, and king, and you and I are called to share in that ministry. So as God manifested himself to Moses and called him to a role in in serving his people. So by God manifesting to us in the Eucharist, you and I are called to a role in service to God and his people. And what is that role? We are to share in the ministry of Christ and Christ's ministry he has as priest, prophet, and king. And we are to share in that ministry. Well, where does that information come from? Somewhere in the catechism, I suppose. Well, yes but you can also find it when you were baptized because those are the exact words used at the second anointing at your baptism. You are now called to share in the ministry of Christ as Christ's role as priest, prophet, and king. That's right in baptism. So the manifestation of God has called you to a role to his people just as the manifestation of God to Moses called you to a role to his people. So the Eucharist is a very powerful sacrament that we have that calls us to be the people of God and calls us to live the gospel in a way that we liberate people from that which oppresses them and that which oppresses them more than anything else is sin. God bless you.